The French National Front, under the leadership of Marine Le Pen, is on the cusp of political victory in 2017. With approval ratings above and beyond that of the older establishment parties, it's seeming increasingly likely that she will be President of the Republic come 2017. The National Front presents an interesting case study for political strategy, as two approaches allow us space for comparison. The National Front of Jean-Marie Le Pen since 1972, and that of his daughter, Marine Le Pen, since 2011. First, some background on the so-called extreme right of France. France, in general, is a conservative country, and a markedly stable one. Governments tend to be centrist and right-leaning, and have, in general, been able to provide cosy living standards for its populace. Momentary eruptions of far-right sentiment have tended to explode at times of left-wing rule, a quick example would be the Pugilists, who were largely a response to the socialist government in the 1950s, but quickly dissipated when questions of Algerian sovereignty came to dominate popular discourse. Come 1962, de Gaulle had come to power, and France was basically a rightist centrist country again until 1981. Of course, far-right sentiment was bubbling underneath, largely unnoticed, but none were able to capture public attention. Most were centred on colonial nostalgia, the giving away of colonies and antipathy to the Republic, politically unviable and electorally destitute. The National Front was founded in 1971 from a group previously named the Ordre Nouveau and began contesting elections with minimal success. Fronted by Jean-Marie Le Pen, the party was initially designed to be a big tent organisation for all far-right groups to coalesce around and support – monarchists, colonialists, Algerian war veterans, pugilists, etc. This is important and became a problem later on. In 1981, the Socialists, led by François Mitterrand, won the general election. This became known as the Socialist Takeover. Once again, we saw a radicalisation of the right and centre-right. Traditional conservative groups aligned with the Front National, and the result was an election to a local council, a breakthrough for Le Pen. Then came 1986, in which the Mitterrand government temporarily changed the French electoral system to one of proportional representation, which allowed for another Front National success in a legislative election, garnering 10% of the vote. By 1997, the party could call itself the third biggest political force in the country. And in a shocking turn of events, come 2002, Le Pen reached the second round of the elections, beating the socialist candidate. Though, frankly, this can barely be called a partial success. The party still lacked significantly electoral credibility, and protests erupted all about the country with 1.5 million French taking to the streets. President Chirac didn't even bother campaigning, he didn't need to, and the Front National were beaten by a landslide 86%. The Front National then experienced decline. The blue wave of Sarkozy and his ability to claim ownership of issues previously spearheaded by the Front National stripped them of credibility and resulted in disappointing electoral success in 2007. Despite gaining public support, the Front National still had little prospect of leadership. Re-evaluations of strategy were needed and duly arrived come 2011, with Jean-Marie's successor, his daughter, Marine Le Pen. Come 2011, according to a Les Echos poll, the majority of the French public viewed the Front National as a party like other parties. They had gained legitimacy. Now she's winning in the polls and honestly, it looks like she will win in 2017. But why? What happened? Jean-Marie Le Pen was old school. Inheriting a brand of French nationalism bellicose to the notion of a French Republic, he managed to successfully alienate himself from many from the word go. Made up of a coalition of staunch Catholics, monarchists, among others, the Republic was seen as a representation of regicide and laciété, or secularism, never fully embraced by Jean-Marie's party. That said, he was media savvy, and he was able to press himself firmly into the limelight. Charismatic and approachable, the media could not resist him. As one staff assistant the French MP noted in 2012, the media will not be able to resist the temptation to put him forward. That is what has happened because he is so appealing, so attractive, and the media ratings go high when he appears and when he speaks. Jean-Marie was renowned for making public gaffes, be it using explicitly racist imagery or referring to the Holocaust as a mere detail of history, as he did in 1987. Sure, 
This got him bags of attention, but basically prevented millions from supporting him with a clear conscience. In some ways, he was able to use this to his advantage. Since the 1988 presidentials, he dubbed himself the outsider and the adversary of the big four establishment parties, quick to mobilize the populist truism of voicing what everyone thinks but dares not say. The problem was, it wasn't exactly hard to undermine these claims. The majority of the French population wanted nothing to do with former collaborationists and Holocaust revisionists, and Jean-Marie kept these individuals a bit too close for comfort. Attempts were made under Jean-Marie to tone down anti-immigrant sentiment. The term national preference was utilized to support a protectionist economic policy and tight border controls. Ideals of cultural identity were dropped in favor of more practical security and economic arguments. But a tension continued to exist between a loyalty to the Republic and adherence to pre-revolution ideals. A party with a strong and staunch Catholic contingent had trouble stomaching Jean-Marie's endorsement of the secular school system in response to demands from Muslims for special allowances to be made. That being said, Jean-Marie Le Pen successfully claimed ownership of the immigration issue. Honestly, few French people gave much mind to immigration, let alone within political discourse until Le Pen made it so in the early 80s. Other parties began to co opt the issue with the hope of redirecting support, but all this did was add legitimacy to his stance. As he himself said, why would the people want the carbon copy when they could have the real thing? But here was the problem. Being beleaguered with accusations of racism, keeping the unfortunate company of extreme elements within the party, and essentially being a single issue political force, it was simply too difficult to gain popular appeal, especially after the key and humiliating political defeat of 2002 and Sarkozy's co-opting of front national policy points come 2007, only in a more complete and legitimate package, free from the stigma. In opinion polls about the time, over 70% of the French people saw the front national, rightly or wrongly, as a danger to democracy. And moreover, supporters were in danger of being stigmatized and ostracized for showing their support. In 2007, the Front National won barely 4% of the vote, their lowest since 1981, and really, it's not hard to see why. The party's image was consistently negative, and little was done to rectify this. Instead, Le Pen focused energy on argumentation, facts, and figures. Their 2007 manifesto opens with a treatise against immigration, citing the economic costs, the lack of work, prison statistics, justifying every policy step with a cost-benefit analysis. Really, this is not politics. People weren't prepared to read the words of a Nazi, regardless of how true they may have been, and the tone of the programme was too heady for the party's working-class base. The Front National was spent. A young and ambitious Marine Le Pen commented in 2006 that the party needed to undergo a ruthless policy of de-demonization. That being to sacrifice the ideological elements of the party that alienated the majority of the French public. Many left the party in response to this, including Bernard Antony, in many ways the de facto leader of the party's ultra-Catholic contingent. This alienation of extremist elements continued with Marine's influence. In 2010, Marine Le Pen, campaigning for party leadership in Lyon, a strong right-wing stronghold, made a comparison between Muslims praying in public streets to Nazi occupation. This was an ingenious move for two reasons. One, it was tough speak and demonstrated her ability to stand her ground and not cow in the face of pressure. But also, and most importantly for the party, two, it isolated Bruno Gollnisch, her competitor for presidency who still kept the company of extreme-leaning Catholics. Of course, this comment sparked a media furore, but Marine was able to frame herself as a defender of the Republic, of the values of equality and secularism, so central to the values of the French state. To emphasize, come early 2012, Marine's rise to presidency of the party, she ceased to label the Front National as nationalist, and instead labeled it as an explicitly Republican party. The process of de-demonization continued unabashed, with steadfast perspicacity. After expelling young activists seen performing the Nazi salute, Marine Le Pen issued a statement. Radical, grotesque and anachronistic groups such as ultra-Catholics and Holocaust deniers have no role to play in the party. 
and went on to state that the Front National will not be used as a platform for their obsessions. Anyone that disagreed with the vision was purged or isolated from the party. In many ways, this was a step that Jean-Marie himself had tried to implement, but his failure was going halfway and not the whole hog. Sure, Jean-Marie Le Pen attempted to moderate his language and even gave populism a go a couple of times, but it was never hard for the media to bring to light shady associations and accusations of anti-Semitism. Marine ensured that this was impossible and reaped the electoral dividend come 2012. Not only that, but she recruited new and young upstarts to run in local elections, more in tune with her ideological vision of de-demonization. Le Pen rarely addressed the issues of immigration directly, and instead focused on other issues resonant with the French people. Again, this requires going back to the notion of secularism, the secularism the Republic has prided itself on. Rather than posing immigration as a threat to an ethnic or racial identity, Marine framed it in terms of a threat to the values of the Republic itself. For example, Marine draws no distinction between Christianity and Islam, and supports the utter banishment of all religious expression from the public sphere. Now, for Christianity, this makes little difference. It's had to obey these rules for some time. But these policy provisions inordinately affect those from Muslim communities. Public money should not be spent on building mosques, she says, as this undermines the integrity of the Republic. Nor should halal meat be served in schools. Using a mainstream political talking point like secularism, Marine is able to achieve broadly similar aims to her father, only in a way that the French people are receptive to. Not only this, but her embracing of republicanism shows that the Front National is a party deeply enmeshed in the dominant culture of France. Now, the Front National is a friend of democracy. Indeed, perhaps it's its chief defender, protecting the Republic from those that wish to undermine its values of equality, liberty and fraternity. Fraternity is important here. Marine is a forthright defender of the welfare state, and similar to the FBO of Austria, claims mass immigration is a danger to its integrity. Le Pen argues that mass immigration reduces social trust and a willingness to contribute on a national level. As she stated in a speech in 2012, one cannot welcome one million foreigners in five years and naturalize 160,000 without jeopardizing the equilibrium of our public finances. Once again, we find immigration framed not as a threat to abstract notions of racial and ethnic survival, but instead to social cues that constitute Frenchness, framed in a progressive and republican framework. Marine is a populist. Remember I mentioned Jean-Marie's 2007 manifesto, largely consisting of numbers and dry language? Well, Marine Le Pen's party program for the 2012 election was a populist textbook. The cover, a picture of her, with no mention of the party, entitled My Project for France and the French, presents herself as the voice of the people and the spirit of the nation. Immigration takes a back seat and is only given a page sandwiched between financial issues and security. The whole program is only 16 pages written in short and concise language, readable by all and focuses on what actually affects people like purchasing power, social and public security. The Front National is no longer a one-issue party but a catch-all party attempting to mobilise as many of the French populace as possible. To put into sharp relief how effective this strategy is and was, after the disastrous results of 2007, within the latter half of 2011 the party doubled in size, and in the 2012 election the Front National attained the largest share of the vote yet, falling just shy of 20%. The core principles of the party really haven't changed only the framing device. We are most likely going to see a 2017 Front National victory, and it will be thanks to a visionary, able to reinvent a party but stick to a core set of principles mobilised through current and pertinent devices the electorate are receptive to. The story of Marine Le Pen is a political masterclass, and regardless of whatever your political persuasion may be, you can't deny her that.